Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another VPN review. Today we're going to be do updating NordVPN for 2023. Is it a VPN you should be using in 2023? We're going to go over the pros and cons with this service and we're going to rank it on VPNTierList.com to see where it stacks up against other VPNs. If you guys like this objective review, click my link in the description down below. It should be able to give you the best current deal going on with NordVPN. However, know that this video is my own opinion. I'm not sponsored by NordVPN and I don't work for the company. Unlike a lot of the other reviews on YouTube, which you'll find, uh, most of them are just bots, voice actors and stuff like that. And it's pretty obvious to tell. Um, pretty much all the NordVPN review rankings right now on YouTube, in fact, I kind of suspect are paid voice actors. And this channel is different because we actually offer criticism and you'll see. so let's go ahead and check out nord right now we're re reviewing it right before the new year and they got a kind of a black friday sale going on however that said nord vpn's pricing actually is actually pretty consistent in terms of it always offering a sale they have a sale going on pretty much all year and the way else the way the sales work with nord is that they primarily offer you a couple extra months here and there but besides that the pricing isn't really too different however if we look at the pricing system we would like to see more flexibility in the standard plan we like to see around ten dollars or under and nord vpn is slightly more expensive than that around twelve dollars additionally nord is also not that flexible with a six month plan but we do generally see pretty good deals between one year and the other years after that but NordVPN unfortunately does offer price increases since you could read here after the first year, it will be uh, more expensive. Um, so if you buy a two year plan, for example, it's gonna be $161, but I'm pretty sure after that, it's gonna be much more expensive per year. I think in some cases around $100 per year. So kind of read the fine lines in the print there. So they do not get points for having a price increase. And I think they only have around six simultaneous devices, which is kind of low. Uh, other VPNs like Surfshark, which are a sister company to Nord, have unlimited simultaneous connections. But most other VPNs that we're looking for have around 10. So they don't get points there either. NordVPN does have a 30-day refund policy, though, 30-day money-back guarantee. But also keep in mind, when the subscription renews, if you do purchase a longer deal, you're going to have to watch to see when they will charge you. So keep a lookout for that. Overall, NordVPN could have a little bit more transparency and a little bit less tricks up its sleeves when it comes to pricing. If you purchase a long-term deal, just be careful about when it will auto-renew. Other than that, you should be fine and long-term deals are decently priced, but I would like cheaper pricing month to month. So guys, this is what NordVPN's application looks like and it actually does have a nice new kind of modern look and feel that they've uh, kind of implemented recently. Additionally, I do believe there is a dark mode, which I've been requesting for who knows how long. Overall, NordVPN has one of the better looking applications, I would say, and it's one of the easier ones to use as well. They have most of the important things like WireGuard, kill switches, and those kind of things, as well as Fire Stick support, browser extensions, um, ad blocking, and threat protection, and stuff like that, as well as obfuscation. Um, that said, we do not see a Linux GUI. Unfortunately, a lot of my cons with NordVPN's application look to probably go unanswered for some time due to their Reddit response answering pretty much all my complaints saying they don't really have any concrete plans on it. They don't really plan to offer a Linux GUI for people who want a graphical user interface on Linux. They offer a CLI, command line language interface, but no uh, GUI. Um, additionally, uh, they do not uh, have port forwarding and no plans to do that either. They do have a Soxify proxy and dedicated IP, which is nice since other VPNs kind of sometimes lack out on that. Stuff thing like Proton don't have that and Surfshark. So in Nord, you do get the Sox 5 option if you want to put that in your Torrent application as well as dedicated IPs for the convenience factor. The nice thing about Nord actually is that they do um, kind of have remote VPN capabilities, which is nice. You could use their Nord VPN mesh net and kind of play around with accessing your local network when you're not at home, which is a cool feature. Nord and only Tor got off of that, but Nord VPN is actually the only VPN to bundle it in and include it. So that's probably one of the coolest things about Nord is the mesh net. So they've put a lot of development into that, which is nice. So that's really cool. Now NordVPN does kind of have a partnership with flash routers, but they don't really offer their own kind of business through it. It's more like a partnership. And you can see that on their website here. So I'm not really gonna give them points for that, uh, but they do have uh, some capability with it, but not um, you know, a complete capability with selling their own VPN routers through their own store or any bundles or anything like that. As far as I know, it's just kind of like a partnership with flash routers that kind of supports NordVPN. Um, the good news is a lot of the popular uh, routers kind of do support Nord, which is nice. Lastly, probably the biggest con with Nord right now, in my opinion, is it the fact that it's not open source. 
for such a big VPN that has dumped so much money into this product, it would be nice to see them make it open source to give more transparency and trust through the application. Um, like a, once again, with some of my cons, Nord does not seem interested in alleviating this one. So that kind of sucks. Next up, however, we can talk about speeds. And with Nord, I haven't had issues with speeds for some time. Back in the old days, it used to be a slower VPN. But they've implemented WireGuard, added tons of servers, have 50 plus countries supported, and I always get optimal speeds with NordVPN, getting anywhere from 6 to 700 on my gigabit connection, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I don't really have any complaints with speeds from NordVPN, and they get full points in that category. Another thing with NordVPN I think could have some improvement would be the privacy section. And once again, Nord doesn't really seem that interested in improving some of my cons here. They don't use open source analytics. They have ad trackers on the website, as well as ad trackers on the applications for mobile use. Um, some of these things definitely could be removed, and I'm not sure why they have them. And in fact, they have eight ad trackers on the website and 16 third-party cookies, which is quite a bit, as well as Google Analytics. So it's not the most trustworthy VPN in terms of its privacy back end. And I've seen some critiques as this as well um, from other people on YouTube that actually critique things. Most of the other reviews on Nord, you won't see this mentioned at all but a lot of VPNs that actually truly care about privacy, they can show it by not having any trackers, any identifying factors in the applications which keep you more anonymous. Additionally, Nord doesn't have the cleanest history in the world. There was an issue with a leaked server key uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, since then, they've taken steps to remedy these kind of factors, um, like having audits and stuff like that, which did improve that kind of transparency for the audit. So I am gonna give them points for having an audit, but uh, tr they're gonna lose some points for just having a little bit of ding in the history in terms of the poor security practices. Uh, I think this actually happened uh, around three years ago, so four years as of this review. So in conclusion, guys, Nord definitely does have some work to do when it comes to some of their pricing and stuff like that, especially with the transparency of pricing, like I've criticized them many times. They also do have a lot of work to do on the privacy backend to make it more trustworthy, especially with some of these trackers and stuff like that, that do collect some amount of unidentifiable or however they want to spin it, user data. So it's definitely a room for improvement. And I wish, wish NordVPN would listen to me when I tell them, you know, make it open source, remove some of these things. All right, guys, now wrapping up this review, we could talk about the streaming compatibility. And NordVPN is actually a really good VPN for streaming. And it blocks almost every region of Netflix with NordVPN on. And that's why I've recommended it as a really, really good streaming VPN. Um, they also have really good customer support nowadays as well, answering your tickets within one hour usually and always answering under 24 hours. So they get full points there. Lastly, I did give Nord uh, five points for being able to handle the review process going forward. 55 to 65 to get S tier. So NordVPN is right under S tier. You know, in summation, it's not a bad VPN. It's got really good speeds. It's got customer support. It's got really good streaming compatibility. The application is pretty good for the most part. NordVPN's biggest problem, biggest critique in my opinion, is just that transparency factor and trust factor. Um, if it can do those things, it could become an S tier. But unfortunately, like some of the Reddit comments I've seen from the team itself, it doesn't seem like they really have that much interest in doing those things. So can it become an S tier VPN? Well, probably not due to the company's own direction they want to go on. Anyways, guys, that's my final thoughts on Nord. You should get it if you really want a VPN that can do a certain number of things really well and you trust them. If you don't, there's also other options that do things a little bit more uh, trustworthy, in my opinion, a little bit more transparent. So take a look at S tier VPNs as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this honest review of NordVPN, and I'll see you again very soon.